Welcome everyone to Story Trading Weekly VIP Meetup. We got three tickers to talk about tonight. So let's get started. First, a quick disclaimer. Story Trading is not an investment advisor and investing in securities involves significant risk of loss. This event is being recorded. It'll be provided to our VIP members uh, for a few days before we put it up on social media. Uh, for those of you not familiar, what's in a story trade? Story trading is a practice of understanding market pricing through the lens of the four pillars of fundamentals, catalyst, sentiment, and technicals. We have an app coming up. Well, first of all, right now we collaborate on WhatsApp and on Zoom in our VIP community. We have an app in private beta right now, which is the place to discover, collaborate, and validate market moving information. So make sure to sign up for that wait list at Story Trading dot com uh our vip picks you can track them online there's a ton of income and ideas coming into our community so we've had to create a new process to vet those vip ideas and that's how we got the new vip idea coming to you in just a few minutes but first we want to update you on two prior vip picks that's dario holdings uh, dario health i'm sorry d-r-i-o and augmentics AUGX. All right. And you can see the stats on those two VIP picks right up on the screen. Um, so Dario happened to be a VIP pick by myself. I don't do too many of them, but this was one that I did. So I'm going to go ahead first and then we're going to get James Ticknor to get an update on augmentics. And then we'll get the new VIP pick out to you by a gentleman by the name of Keith, who is new to our community. So First, Dario Health, uh, last trade $16.61. You saw on the previous slide, it's done pretty well overall. It's a $275 market cap. I'm giving an update tonight because they just had Q3 earnings. There's been a bunch of recent deals announced and we're having a private meeting with the CEO tomorrow for our VIP members, tomorrow at 11 a.m. So uh, <clears throat> this is where we start. What's the story behind the trade? And we look at those four pillars. So. I want to show you this chart, which I had uh, presented. Where there we are. I presented this uh, on on Benzinga uh, a few weeks ago, down when you know when the stock was at a bottom there at eleven thirty three, and also I gave an update to our VIP community that I thought it was an excellent time to enter right there, and it turned out it was. Now the explanation for why it dropped, you could see from the peak. There was a broader decline link to Teladoc going down for a while, and then it went sharply down fifty percent after the end of uh, Q1, was it Q1 or Q2 report then? Uh, Q1 report, I guess it was. After the Q1 report, um, there's a sharp decline, or maybe it was Q2, because, and the reason that happened was because they had promised by the end of July, it was at the end of July, I believe, that they would sign that big healthcare insurer, right? This is a deal they've been working on for over a year, I would say even six quarters, and it kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed. And this big health care insurer is a huge deal. It's something that can increase the revenue ultimately by tens of millions of dollars, right? Um, and the price targets of $30 plus by a lot of analysts are including the probability of them getting this insurer deal. And they missed their own deadline, right? They missed their own deadline, and that's when it immediately dropped 50% because they had lost credibility. So what has happened since then? So here we go. Uh, since then, we had the Q2 report right at the bottom there, right? Which, uh, you know, I thought the sell-off was too extreme because based on my conversations with management and also what was in that Q2 report, that deal was still coming. It was still delayed, right? So the stock went down 50% ahead of Q2 because they were late. They missed their own deadline. But when you listen to the Q2 report, we learned that that deal is still coming. Now, a lot of people may not believe them. So the stock didn't gap up by them saying it's still coming. They still have to prove it out. So in any case, the stock bottom there in that report. And then you had a couple of weeks later, a raft of employer deals being announced, um, nonstop flow of, of press releases of different employer deals. So not the big insurer deal that's going to increase the revenue by tens of millions of dollars, but then what happens? You see this gap right here? Boom, right there. First national insurer deal announced, 
This is a big, big freaking deal. My arrow is off center a little bit. So I'll be a little more to the left of that first green candle, the gap. Um, this is a huge deal. And um, honestly, it could have gapped more, but it's got some technical resistance there at the 200 DMA. It's got very negative sentiment from how Teladoc is doing. And there's still people who are have to catch back up to this in terms of the poor sentiment, right? That they didn't come through on this deal. People just tuned out. I know a lot of people who are very bullish back here when it made its first run to $30. Lots of big people, lots of big social media influencers, a lot of people into Dario saying, this is the next Livongo. But that insurer deal never came. They left, they got out of the story, and it's taking them time to figure out that they're winning their credibility back. But that's not the end of the story. After that insurer deal, um, they had Q3 report. And that Q3 report was probably the best one from the company I've ever heard. Now, the initial reaction was down, and I expected that because Q3 was a slight miss. The uh, outlook for Q4 is a slight miss. Why? Simply because of timing. Everything's pushed back just a little bit because, because that insurer deal came later than expected, right? Doesn't change anything in terms of the you know, long-term valuation. Um, but you know some people don't like those headlines. So you got that one little red candle, but it's already rebounding here the next couple of days, especially because just a couple of days after that, they announced a couple more employer deals. And I believe this last one in the PR, I said, I think they said they're up to 49 employers now. They're just cranking out these contracts left and right. Most of these are going to start contributing January 1st. So Q1 should be a real, real big hockey stick kind of growth for the company. Q1, Dario Health over here. And it's trying to break out of this 200 DMA, but having a hard time, but there's some great news here. Let me, let me show you what the great news is. We are now seeing divergence from Teladoc performance. Here it is. Look at Teladoc. Teladoc has been a disaster, especially the last several months, especially the last several days. Now, Drio often change, uh, trades in lockstep with, with, with Teladoc. It said here, this sharp decline here. Now, these are different time scales, so it's hard, it's hard to see uh, right with these two charts I did. But this big drop here correlated with this big drop here. And that big rise over here also correlated with this big rise over here, right? So there's a lot of um, association with how Teladoc is doing. But right here, the last few weeks, we are now seeing divergence away where people are starting to see that Dario can hold its own. Perhaps Dario can be the next Livongo, right? So there's a lot of stuff going on. Now, in the middle of all this, there was also a shelf offering. I'm not sure exactly what date, but you can see it didn't impact the stock much. And, you know, I spoke to uh, Erez about that shelf offering. And he said that they're not planning to sell stock in the open market with that. They, that, they had to file that for, they're planning on making that private transactions, strategic transactions. They just need to increase like the share count. Um, uh, so they can do these deals. But, you know, one of the things I love about Dario is that they've been doing the best financing deals ever, like for these small companies. No warrants at all in the last, like, several finances they did the last 18 months. Many of the deals were over market pricing. I mean, this guy is amazing to be able to pull off these deals for such a small market cap. It's almost unheard of. So um, he's basically promised me the same thing. He's like, you know, I'm going to keep doing, doing these great deals for, for the company. So um, he's not planning on, on dumping stuff into the market. But I think we're going to learn more about that hopefully tomorrow uh, when we chat with the CEO. So tomorrow morning, 11 a.m., we'll have an update with the CEO. We have time for one or two questions, just a couple minutes. Let's see if there's anything in chat, if there's any questions. Um, we have a cliche saying, can we also talk about overall market condition in the meeting today with fear of inflation and market correction, especially? Now, we'll, you know, we'll talk about that after our uh, planned presentations. When we turn off the recording and we go to trade of the week, we'll talk about overall market. Thank you for that question, Akleesh. Thank you so much. So uh, if there are no questions, Jared, did he have any uh, questions on Dario?
make Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yep, I hear you. Okay, yeah. No, I don't have any questions. I think you did a good job explaining it, and I'm I'm familiar with this. I think that, uh, yeah, the, the deal flow is nice, and uh, I look forward to a future report when they can actually start, you know, recognizing it. Yeah, yeah. Q1 will real start Q1 for sure. So uh, anyway, those are VIPs. You can collaborate in the Dario Research Group. You got the link available from the VIP room. And with that, since we got a packed program, we're going to move over to James.